good evening and welcome to our service of Compline or night prayer on this Sunday the 15th of October. Let's just spend a moment uh, in quiet reflecting on the day that we have had um, as we come before God in prayer as we come to this time of meditation and reflection. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray, that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night, tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Our reading this evening is Matthew chapter 22, starting at the first verse. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to all to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reflection then on our uh, reading from Matthew, from a sermon by St Augustine. All believers are familiar with the story of the wedding of the king's son and the banquet that followed and how the Lord's table was thrown open to all comers. Now, what precisely does this mean? Let us try to find out what it is that some believers have, but which the, lack, but which, which the wicked lack, for that will be what the wedding garment is. Can it be one of the sacraments? Hardly, for these, as we know, are common to good and bad alike. Take baptism, for example. 
It is true that no one comes to God except through baptism, but not not every baptised person comes to him. We cannot take the sacrament as the wedding garment then, for it is a robe worn not only by good people, but also by wicked people. Perhaps then it is our altar that is meant, or at least what we receive from it. But we know that many who approach the altar eat and drink to their own damnation. Well then, maybe is it fasting? The wicked can fast too. What about going to church? Some bad people also go to church. Whatever can this wedding garment be then? For an answer, we must go to the apostle who says, The purpose of our command is to arouse the love that springs from a pure heart, a clear conscience and a genuine faith. There is your wedding garment. It is not love of just any kind. Many people of bad conscience appear to love one another but you will not find in them the love that springs from a pure heart, a clear conscience and a genuine faith. Only that kind of love is the wedding garment. If I speak of the tongues of men and of angels, says the apostle, but have no love, I am nothing but a booming gong or a clashing cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, if I have all knowledge and understand all mysteries, if I have faith strong enough to move mountains, but have no love, I am nothing. In other words, Even with all these gifts, I am nothing without Christ. Does that mean that prophecy has no value and the knowledge of mysteries is worthless? No, they are not worthless, but I am, if I possess them, but have no love. But can the lack of one good thing rob so many others of their value? Yes, without love, my confession of the name of Christ, even by shedding my blood or offering my body to be burnt, will avail me nothing if I may do this out of the desire for glory. That such things can be endured for the sake of empty show, without any real love for God, the Apostle also declares. Listen to him. If I give away all I have to the poor, if I hand up over my body to be burnt but have no love, it will avail me nothing. So this is what the wedding garment is. Examine yourselves to see whether you possess it. If you do, Your place at the Lord's table is secure. We say the Nunc Dimittis together. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Let us pray. O God, for as much as without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Almighty God, by triumphing over the powers of darkness, Christ has prepared a place for us in the new Jerusalem. May we, who have this day given thanks for his resurrection, praise him in this eternal city, of which he is the light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. It's been a pleasure to pray with you this evening as ever. I hope you have a uh, good rest and I will see you again soon. God bless.